What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This is part of the Prosper Show e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts teach you what really works to boost your e-commerce business. They have an amazing conference with some of the top Amazon sellers and industry leaders, including Excelco, who will be there. Um, now today, I'm very excited. We have Ray Nolan. He's one of Ireland's most successful internet entrepreneurs. Ray founded Raven Computing, later known as Core Time, in 1989. Seriously, a pioneer of uh, software and SaaS. Core Time was sold to Sage in 2004. In 1999, he founded the hugely successful online room reservation group, HostelWorld.com. There's a really amazing story about how they acquired the domain Hostel.com. It was leading worldwide brand with distribution contracts in 170 countries, more than 12 million visitors a month. They sold it in November of 2009, returning more than 500 million on a $150,000 total investment. He's former chairman of Skyscanner, if that wasn't enough, he is founded and is acting CEO of Excel Co. Software. They provide market-leading e-commerce SaaS tools. Ray, thanks for joining me. What's the, one of the craziest stories from the, the hostile world days? Because that oh. grew from a bootstrapped to a very large company. Yeah. Oof. I think, you know, that, that when you're in travel at the scale we were in with, with the audience, which was very young, that we, we had... We had some pretty tough times in terms of, you know, terrorism tax. We had really, you know, yeah. Wow. We, we, you know, when you when you see, you know, when you, uh, like you know, nine eleven, nine eleven crushed the, the travel industry, right? The online travel industry when it was just nascent, it was really only beginning. You know, you realize. So we were on the first planes into the states wow. after nine eleven. I was on the first plane, and we had five of us go. I went, I can remember, I think I went to LA and San Fran. I had people go to Chicago and New York, and I had other guys go to Miami and Dallas. And where else? Somebody what else. were they doing? What, what were they? They were talking to hostels and they were saying, you know, we will, we will do the best we can to get this stuff going, to get the kids traveling again. The beauty about being in a young travel industry is that people are, they're freer. And they're more likely to go places and get back on the planes quicker, you know. And then we all met in Cancun in Mexico on the same trip for the where there was a travel conference when nearly all the exhibitors had cancelled. Wow. Except us. <laughs> and so we had the world it's devastating hostels going, you know, who's gonna fill our beds? Nobody's flying, you know, the places are empty. So and, and we had time and again, the problem is, you know, you had London bombings, you had Madrid bombings, you had Bali bombings, you had um, the horrific earthquakes where, you know, and, and you you just have to fight and you have to do the best you can for your customers in those worlds, you know, when things right. are wrong. I mean, I mean, the customers being the properties or being the kids who are traveling, who are now lost or, you know, you got, we had horrific situations where people were looking for lost ones, you know, but we just did our best, you know? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So we, we, the thing was to meet the challenges. And, and while, you know, there's, there's thankfully less, less, mm -hmm. uh, less things go wrong in this industry. It's the same thing. You, you meet the challenges that the business throws up and you try to be the best you can. And, and that's, you know, those, those, that kind of integrity nearly always, you know, the karma police, which I firmly believe in, they let you away if you, if you try to solve it. <laughs> you know, people are going to have problems. It's software. Software doesn't always work. But as long as you, you know, endeavor to fix it within a timeline that's, that's acceptable, yeah. people give you a break. Yeah. Particularly if you manage to add a feature in that they've not thought of or that they think that they have thought of that nobody else listened to. And we do listen because it's the customers that gave us half the ideas. It isn't Ray Nolan sitting up on a top of a mountain, comes down with 10 new things he's going to add to his product. It's what the customers say we should have. Yeah. You know? So what's as late as of late with Excelco? What, what feedback... What feedback have you implemented because of what they're saying and maybe not implemented because it wasn't 
it's not a priority yet because you, you yeah. can't, you know, execute yeah, you on everything. Have, so, so it is important. Look at, I mean, I think languages, the way we do languages is really taking shape now. So mm-hmm. historically, you know, you know, you could sell, I mean, in terms of internationally or even, you know, multilingually in terms of a high Spanish, Spanish speaking population in certain parts of the States, you want to, you want to support people in the, in the language that most most comfortable using. So what we do is we, we allow people trade in markets they wouldn't normally trade into. So if I'm, if I've got, I've got an e-commerce store uh, selling on Amazon UK and I say, gosh, I wouldn't mind selling in France, but my French is terrible. Or, so, or non-existent. Right. Yeah, or non existent Well, my French is actually not that bad. So let's go to Germany. Right? So <laughs> no German at all. Right. Right. Say buy beer, bitte, which means three beers. Um, <laughs> tell you why that's a good one. But um, the point being, so but so what we do is we allow you trade in those markets, and then we take we take your incoming support queries, which come in in German. Yeah. We translate them for you automatically. Mm-hmm. You can then answer in English, and then we will translate it to German on the way back out. Yeah. Now let me let me be clear. I'm not personally translating it, and it is a machine translate, so it's not perfect. Right. But guess what? Most of the questions are, where is my Apple iPhone that didn't arrive? Right. Or is it available in blue? Right. They're the big questions that people ask. Okay. And so you can write beautifully translated template responses to the more frequently asked questions about your products yeah. that we can automatically fill in the, re- in the reply templates that say, dear Ray, in French, you know, here's your... You know, here's the answer to your question. Yeah. So that's really cool. So we identify the incoming language. So even if I've sold something on, e- on eBay in Germany, the person might write in English, in, in which case I don't want to translate it to anything yeah. else. So we identify the incoming language and we translate to the user's language. Um, so in terms of broadening international business and increasing prevalence of more channels and more international channels, I mean, Alibaba, you know, there, there's real opportunity in Asia. The question is, are people going to make the leap and they're going to wonder, you know, how am I going to support a guy in Shanghai who buys my product? Well, you know, we can help with that uh, by translating the incoming algorithms. And yeah, it's not going to be perfect because you're not going to pay, you know, four dollars a page to have something translated every time someone writes to you. Right. But the questions are pretty much always the same. And yet sometimes there'll be a difficult question that says, you know, where is the switch on my iPad Pro? And maybe you'll make a fist of it. But it's better than no answer. Right. You know? I mean, well, I like what you're saying. I mean, basically, you listen to the customers and fulfill on their pain points. Um, but you still are a visionary. What are some things that you felt were coming in and either it wasn't kind of where the vision, you didn't feel it fit into the vision of the product or you had to change what they're saying to create something what they really wanted? You know, they yeah. were saying one thing and yeah. they really wanted something else. I mean, it's like, you know, Henry Ford, everybody, yeah. they really, oh, fast. fine. you know, you can have anyone as long as it's black. I think that customers are not always great at explaining what they want. They can tell you what the pain is. And because yeah. their manifestation of the pain is this way, they describe it. And if you were to transcribe what they've said and then implement it in software, it would work for them and for them only. The job of someone like me is to interpret the question right. and say, Okay, how can I simplify this so that even if it goes 80% of the way for this guy, it doesn't clunk up the prospects or, or, or the process or the flow for everybody else. So I do like Jason Fried or Fried, I don't know if it's Fried or Fried, yeah, yeah. He, uh, the base camp guy. And you know, his, his, his thinking on, on, on writing software is pretty cool, which is you've got to be a curator, like a curator of, a, of an art gallery. You know, you could not put a Van Gogh uh, beside a load of modernist paintings just would look silly. So you've got all the paintings in the world, but you leave some of them in the basement, but you only put the good ones out because now the gallery looks complete, you know? And that's when you're looking at a software feature, you gotta say, is this gonna feel good in my product? And, and to be a curator means that sometimes you've gotta say, no, this picture's not going in my gallery. Right. Or maybe, you know, a version of it might fit if I, you know, do some. Do is some there a that. process for voting in or out those type of features? Is this a democracy? Is that what you're asking me? No, uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not getting yeah, at anything no, no. in particular. I'm just wondering the yeah. process because, you know, people out there maybe don't have a process for taking in yeah. feedback. And so I'm wondering what kind of what your process looks like. 
so we get it because because our because our support people and our onboarding people mm-hmm. are part of the product design process. They're not out in another building somewhere or or in India or anywhere else, uh, bereft of communication with the rest of us. So where we have support people, they're very much part of the design process. So they're hearing from customers, this is pretty tedious. Uh, so and and we have a kind of a rule which is if the same question comes up five times, it's not it's not users, it's us. Right. We either make it easier or remove it, or at, at very worst, we write a really great helper video. We do a great helper video that says, this is how you do it. So yeah. if it's like something which we feel is rudimentary, but at the end of the day, it serves everybody's purpose. If you've got a video that's beside the button that will play to tell you what to do, it, then it stops you having to make a support call, so we save money, or we take out the process and we make it easier for you to do what we wanted you to do. Yeah. 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 It's a win for everybody. Yeah. Ray, people look at your track record and it's pretty remarkable with tons of successes. And I I remember I listened to one of your talks and you say, you just keep kissing frogs and eventually meet a prince. What are yeah. some of those frogs along the way where you were maybe too early to market? Oh, oh my favorite one is a thing which I created back, which is called Passport Vault. And, and so there's a very unique problem, or was much more relevant back in the day, but backpackers. Backpackers would tend to go traveling and they would take a photocopy of their documentation. They'd have a photocopy of their passport, they have a photocopy of all their flight itineraries, they maybe have a photocopy of reservations they made in various things. Whatever. Yeah, and people still do that probably. Yeah. Maybe they do. Yeah. Uh, so my view was this is not good because inevitably that paper becomes used for something else. Maybe you're caught short in the jungle. Maybe your backpack goes on fire. But sure as eggs are eggs, when you need that piece of paper, it's not going to be available to you. Okay? So my view was, and this is back in the day, so faxes were prevalent. We created a thing where you could go online and buy a bit of storage on our servers. And in fact, what we sent you then was a barcode, a cover page with a barcode. And what you did was you went to a fax machine, you typed in our fax number, you put the barcode in, Bar, the header page in right. and you put all your other pages in after it and that sent it to our mm. cloud storage you're like Amazon S3 well wait till I tell you this is what's so funny about yeah. this so how many people bought the product we thought we'll do this and then when you're stuck and you're in Bali and you've lost everything you just log into this thing you can print out all that documentation you've got a copy of your passport you've got everything you need is there to be printed and we'll charge you like 20 bucks how many people bought it one my mother <laughs> Okay. We could not get people to understand it. Now, listen to what I just described. Yeah. I just described secure document storage in the cloud. Right. So, did we know we had invented what would be the new way of doing things that I invented this thing? No. Was it worth it? So, that's my other thing. So, keep kissing frogs. But also, there are no bad ideas, just bad timing. Okay? That was a phenomenal idea. I didn't I put it in the right context. And it wasn't in the cloud, it was in, on our servers. We had special dedicated storage. But the process was exactly as Google Storage or Box or any of these others, it is secure storage right. of files on the web. So anyway, no bad ideas, just bad timing. And, you some, know, that wasn't a bad day. I'm sure some people have bad ideas, but yeah, that was not one. Yeah, but some of the, well, most, well, of course, <laughs> you know, I will always hope that my ideas were good, but just didn't work. I did launch a site called worky.com at a time when, you know, at the, at the peak of the recession. So there were no jobs and you know, we just didn't, just didn't hack it. Recruitment's one, recruitment is an industry so ripe for disruption and so many people try it and never really make it. And I, yeah. I haven't yet, I've yet to see disruption, true disruption in recruitment. And you know what? I'm not gonna be that guy. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not gonna be that guy, you know. I mean, we, I, think the, I think the problem with recruitment and disrupting it is we think that it's just data that you think that someone's LinkedIn profile or their CV or whatever is stored somewhere and searchable and I can now find all the you know PHP developers and so on but the, you forget that there are people at the far end of that piece of paper and they've got to be convinced to come and move yeah come leave their job come to your place and yeah. that's it's hard to disrupt emotion and what my wife says when I go home and tell her I want to move to this new startup when I've got a, you that's know, a pretty a, easy I, predictable thing also yeah. Yeah. Get out of go. the house. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Ray, what are the advantages and disadvantages of being an Irish in Ireland, based in Ireland, entrepreneur? 
Or, yeah, you know what I mean? Well, I'll give you the Irish bit first. Yeah. Um, we talk, we're reasonably good talkers. We're, as a, as a nation, pretty well educated and reasonably gregarious and we're pretty, much, pretty, pretty outgoing. We'll happily sit and have a beer with anybody. So, you know, I would always sort of pontificate that, you know, if you've got a choice of doing business with, let's say, a German guy or an Irish guy, you know, two things will it'll be very different. The German guy will deliver on time. The Irish guy will be late, but you probably enjoy being late with the Irish guy. Um, so it's, it's a different dynamic. Um, whereas, so that's being our doing business is pretty cool because first of all, we're the only English speaking country that's a member of the EU. So we're the bridge for American countries, American companies coming in. So, you know, if you are a big e-tailer, you're probably best placed to do business in Europe out of Ireland because we're, we're the only English speaking member of the EU because England are leaving or Britain are leaving. And we have the Euro, which is not, not sterling. So it's one less pain point. Because doesn't Shopify have a lot of their customer service or some customer service based in Ireland? A lot of people, yeah, yeah. a lot of companies would have. Um, and, and obviously Google is huge here, Apple is huge here, Microsoft is huge here, and not for tax, for the fact that we were made to do this. The web was made to bring people from Ireland to the rest of the world, the, the ones that weren't going to get on planes, you know. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty... Do you pretty, find any disadvantages being in Ireland as opposed to maybe, you know, Silicon Valley or, or somewhere, some other location? Um, well, for sure, you know, I mean, I've, I've done some work in the Valley and, you know, in terms of fundraising and so on, it's a pretty, pretty, uh, it's not as adventurous an investment market if you were a startup over here. Um, but having said that, the upside is that when you make it, you probably own, own more of the equity in the company. So it's not a bad thing, you know? Um, and, and yeah, there's not, a, there's not, a, it's not a very strong culture of tech. So we don't, we're not loaded up with, with, with developers, but thankfully Ireland is a place where a lot of Europeans want to come. So we have in this building, we have, in terms of diversity, we're about, I think we're 51, 49, uh, boys and girls. We have about 15% of the staff are Irish and the rest of them have come from hmm. all over. Europe. Really? Wow. All over it's amazing. Yeah. So they, they come, it's a pretty cool place. And I think that if you're, you know, your culture is one that allows them to go home and lets them sort of be part of things. And we, you know, it means that you have to do different things, you know, culturally, we, we have a lot of team kind of sports that we sponsor yeah. the company. We try to get them to make sure they're mixing and so on, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty fine. Right. So Ray, I appreciate your time and I appreciate um, being able to research this because you have some fascinating, I encourage people to go out there and because we can only get a fraction of everything that you've done, but there's, there's other talks out there. Um, I have one last question I've been just dying to ask you the whole time. I'm going to ask it in a second, but um, tell people where they should check you out. They can go to xcellco.com, which is x s e l l c o.com. Um, we didn't get a chance to talk. I mean, I would have gone in depth with Hostile World, Core Time, Skyscanner. So there's so many worky, I mean, you name it. We, we touch like a fraction of a fraction today. But are there any other places we should point people towards to check out besides um, Excelco.com? I think watch Excelco. Excelco is a billion dollar company being made right now. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I genuinely... I have never been as happy with where a product is and where our customers are and the sense that we're helping them as I am today. So yeah. Yeah. this is where I'm going to be. Yeah, I appreciate your time. And you could also check them out. I mean, they're going to be at the Prosper Show. They're at, I think I saw you guys at IRCE. You, yeah. you go to a bunch of the conferences. So if you see them at one of these conferences, go up, say hello, check them out. Um, so my last question, Ray, is um, you have nine toes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I but I, but I did start with ten. So, okay. So if I get my pedicure now. I look for a discount. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I used to play a lot of rugby, and and if you know rugby, you and you can picture a scrum, which is where the bigger, slower guys get in the middle and cut into a huddle. That that hurts everybody. I'm the guy at the front getting getting pretty mashed up. But one of the features of of rugby is a line out where you throw a guy who's invariably what's what's what, what's 20 stone maybe 300 pounds you throw him in the air and you, you keep him above your head but when he comes down uh, he comes down on your foot 
And so my toe, one of my second toe in was so mashed that it didn't look like a toe much anymore. Oh. So it had to go. It, this was over years of being stamped. They did they cut month. it off. They just cut it off. So it's, it doesn't affect me in any way, but it's kind of an interesting thing. And But you also have the one of the world's biggest rugby apps. Yeah, yeah. I own ultimaterugby.com and, and the Ultimate Rugby app. So if you, if you like it, please, it's free. And it's my gift to the rugby world, which is uh, I really, really like it. And it's, you know, professional sportsmen are like entrepreneurs in many, many ways. And it's a privilege to hang out with them sometimes, which is just to see the level of dedication and how they think about winning and how they think about and how they play for each other. Maybe, you know, in some sports, not all, but, but certainly in rugby. In rugby, if you don't have everybody playing with you, yeah. someone's gone. So I feel like you maybe took that into your team and your companies. Uh, yeah, well, I hope so. I, I think I'd like to think that we behave as a team. And, and while somebody has to be the leader of the team, they're just the leader. They're not, you know, I'm not always right. I'm just, I just say things. And I encourage people to say, you know, you'll get more respect from me. When you tell me I'm wrong than when you say yes to what I told you. Right. Yeah. Everyone check out xlco.com. Ray, I want to be the first one to thank you. Thank you so much from Dublin. It's been great. Thank you yeah. so much. Good to talk. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other.